Hello there, and welcome to Scientists Today, where we get to meet the greatest inventors of our time. I'm your host, Katie Barglowski. Today's special guest is Alexander Graham Bell, known best as the inventor of the telephone. Before we bring him out, though, we're going to take a little trip through time, back to back Mr. To Bell's Mr. childhood. Bell. The first Alexander Bell was an elocutionist, someone who studies spoken language. In his spare time, he also wrote plays, and his work inspired George Bernard Shaw's well-known play Pygmalion. That's quite a claim to fame for this family already. Anyway, this Bell's son, Alexander Melville, followed in his father's footsteps and studied language as well, particularly as it pertained to deaf culture. His great accomplishment was developing visible speech, which is a set of written symbols designed to aid deaf individuals with speaking. Alexander Melville became particularly close with Eliza Grace Simmons, who was herself deaf and a phenomenal pianist and painter of miniatures. They were married, and in March of 1847, our Alexander Bell was born in the beautiful city of Edinburgh, Scotland. Interestingly, he was not given his iconic middle name of Graham until he was 10 years old. Young Bell was homeschooled for much of his life, but he did attend formal institutions for his high school years. His teacher described him as a mediocre student, but a good problem solver. In fact, when he was only 14 years old, he and his two brothers worked together to invent a device to quickly and easily remove husks from wheat. He also managed to manipulate the mouth and vocal cords of his dog in such a way that when it growled, it sounded like words. I wish that invention had caught on. I'd love to know what my dogs were trying to say. However, Bell didn't like the compulsory curriculum, so he dropped out of school at 15 years old and never graduated. In 1865, his family relocated to London. He passed the entrance exams for the University College London and began his studies there. But sadly, he wasn't able to finish them because he soon lost both of his brothers to tuberculosis, and he and his parents moved once again, this time to Canada. Bell quickly fell in love with this country, but only a year later left for better school and work opportunities. In 1871, he had established his life in Boston, Massachusetts, and over the next several years, he worked in many deaf schools throughout the region. Here, he made connections with Thomas Sanders and Gardner Hubbard, who backed him in a project to create a harmonic telegraph machine that would allow for multiple messages to be sent out via multiple frequencies. This was his first step toward the invention that would soon make him famous. Now that you have some background, let's hear what happened next from the man himself. Please welcome Mr. Alexander Graham Bell. It's an honor to have you here with us today, Mr. Bell. How are you? I'm doing quite well. Thank you for having me here today. So I'm just going to jump right in with some questions. I was just talking about your work with the Harmonic Telegraph in Boston. What ended up happening with that? I actually worked on that project with a gent named Thomas Watson. Great man, great electrician. While we were trying to figure out how to send multiple telegraph messages over the wire, I had this, this crazy idea, what if we tried to send voices over the wires too? And this was kind of a new idea, right? Quite right. As far as I was aware, no one had attempted something like this before. So, what happened next? Thankfully, Watson was crazy enough to join me on this idea. Couldn't have done it without him. <clears throat> so we drew up our plans using our research from the telegraph device and then submitted our plans to the patent office. And they gave it to you, even though you hadn't built the machine yet? We had it built, it just wasn't working fully. It was a good enough idea that they trusted us enough to get it working. That was March 7th, 1876. Just three days later, we transmitted our first message, a uh, phone call, as you would call it today. Now, would you mind clearing something up for us? We heard that your first message was the result of you spilling acid on yourself and calling for Dr. Watson. <laughs> no, that's not what happened. I just heard some noises over the wires and was calling Dr. Watson over to share the results. <laughs> that makes sense. What was that first message, if you don't mind me asking? Not at all. I said, Dr. Watson, come here, I need you. And he heard me, through the wire. So we refined the device and got it ready for the market. And by the next year, there were over 150,000 phones in the United States in people's homes. Now, it wasn't easy for you to hold on to that patent, though, once your invention became popular, was it? No, not at all. We faced over 550 court cases since we started selling them. I didn't really stick with the business side of it for very long, though. I handed it over to Hubbard, who's been our business partner since the beginning. What did you do after you left the Bell Telephone Company? Well, in 1880, I started Volta Laboratories to study deafness and improve the phonograph. 
1886, 10 years after the telephone, I received a patent for the graphophone, a device designed to help people who cannot hear well develop their verbal skills. So, you still worked with the deaf community even after you were famous for the telephone? Of course. I always said I wanted to be known as the teacher of the deaf first. That's always been my true pride and joy. That's wonderful, Mr. Bell. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us before you go? I would like to thank my lovely wife, actually. We met shortly after I started all those projects in 1873. She was actually one of my deaf students originally. We got married in 1877, had four wonderful children, and then we got a home in Nova Scotia, Canada. We named it Bainbrook, which means beautiful mountain. Ugh, I love that place. What a lucky woman. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today, Mr. Bell. Not at all. That wraps up our segment for today. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you all next week to hear about Albert Einstein and his exceptional contributions to the area of physics. Remember, you can always call in with questions and requests, thanks to Mr. Bell and his invention.